Big time plays here by Steve Smith. And Fox pumps up a three. Jimmy Smith hitting the three. Here's Isaiah. Go! Mr. Big Shot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Open Court here on NBA TV. I'm Ernie Johnson. I'm, I'm so excited uh, to be here for another round of these shows. And this is a great show because it's all about NBA champions, what it takes to be a champion. And to be on the panel for this show, you have to be an NBA champion. Are the champions ready backstage? Yeah. At least one of them is. <laughs> um, introducing uh, a guy who went to the finals once and made the most of it, won an NBA championship with the San Antonio Spurs. Go ahead and walk out. I'm not going to talk very long. Steve Smith. You're the Iron Man of open court, as a matter of fact. Um, number two, uh, the guy who, I guess, I guess he's the only guy on the panel who looks better without makeup. Rick Fox, a, uh, a three-time NBA champion in four trips to the NBA Finals. I'm wearing, I'm wearing makeup today, Ernie. Yeah, I know you are, dude, for, for no apparent reason. I know. There you Never go. Hurts, right? okay. I didn't cut it! Get a haircut! And I didn't cut it! Uh, twice to the finals, got himself a championship ring. Chauncey B -b 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 Billups. Hey! You guys hold your applause, okay? You did that well, Ernie. I like that. <laughs> yeah, you like that? I even put an extra B in there. Yeah. Yeah. Chauncey, how are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. Our fourth panelist. Um, and he and I were talking just the other night, and he said, the bad boys was really a misnomer. They really weren't that bad a bunch. Uh, Two-time NBA champion. Isaiah Thomas is with us. Zeke. Hey, what's happening? What's up? <laughs> don't, don't you? I love these, these low-key intros. A guy who has worked with me for, I, I can't even count the number of years. <laughs> Kenny, two-time champion, by the way. Kenny, the Jet. Smith! Oh, there what you to go. do the Arsenio? <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Jet? How what's up, you? gentlemen? What's up? What's up? Kenny, what's, up? what's happening, boy? What's up, champs? How y'all doing? Good. I'm good. So that's our panel for this uh, for this show on champions. <laughs> oh. Shaquille O'Neal! Come on, big fella. Four championship <laughs> rings, six trips to the finals. Big smooth. <laughs> what are you go doing, back. man? He's making circles. <laughs> What's that on your uh, finger there, by the way? One of my rings. Look at the size of that bad boy. Well, keep keep it down there on your on your. Well, no, this is how this is how we do it, Ernie. <laughs> <What's laughs> <that boy? laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I keep it here. I keep it here for the. Uh, look at, for the, you, look at the difference, though. The, the the difference from the the errors right there. Wow, that's how many how many, how many years apart is that? Or oh, the fingers? That's probably what? four years. Two or three? Four, four years apart? No, two years. This is two thousand and one. No. That one is. Cause they uh, stole one from us. No, nah, we took one. Oh, you stole in one. Cut it out. We had, took that one in 04, We had a lot but of go turmoil ahead. on our team. <laughs> Ain't our fault. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> our fault. So this exploited the turmoil. Yeah, exactly. I see some of you uh, sporting your rings. Uh, yeah, I, I got two class rings. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah got on his McDonald's all American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I got two class rings. I mean, we talk about different eras, you know. They definitely, you know. Yeah. That well, this that thing, this that thing's know. not even a ring. That's like a platter. I, I think Shaq, you were the first to supersize the rings, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, you supersize that Shaq. Yeah, I, super I think Shaq was the first to supersize everything. Yeah, no, because <laughs> because like. It took us a while to get one, so like when they brought the first, and I was real disappointed. So I had to take it to my jeweler to have my homeboy up, because I definitely couldn't walk in the club no. with that. But Smitty, what you got on there from San I got Antonio? This one done, boy. Yeah. Looks like a little class ring compared to that one. <laughs> no, it's nice. It's nice. And Jet, you're not wearing yeah, either of yours. Well, I gave my first to my brother, mm -hmm. and my second to my dad. To Vince? Oh, no, my first to Your my brother dad. Brother Vince. My first to my dad, my second to my brother Vince. Uh -huh. I like those that. are the two guys who helped me get there. So they walk around with it, and they always, they do what Shaq does. 
Yeah. <laughs> Look, hey. And yours is in yeah. a vault somewhere, I assume. Yeah, I wish my story was that good. I just forgot mine. Okay, well, let's, <laughs> I, we appreciate your honesty, and that's what we're all about here on. Here you on you have so many of them. You just yeah. I mean, them. but when you're a champion, you don't you don't have to. Well, word. They know you're a champion. Well, the first question, the first real question, aside from all that stuff, is when you reflect on that night um, when you do get the ring. What emotions are you feeling, and do you have any idea? Do you know what the ring's going to look like? Or when you open that box, the is that the first time you're seeing it? Well, you, I think the guys in here are probably kind of the captains of the team. You kind of have something to do with the design of the ring, but you still, you know, are anticipating that night, you know, eagerly anticipating that night to, to open up that box in, in front of 20,000 and get that ring. Is it... Uh... Is it sappy or syrupy of me to, to say that, yeah, when you open that and you look at it, you reflect on all the work it took to get there? Or are you just saying, yeah, that's nice? Uh, which, which year are we talking about? Ooh, don't no, I'm just kidding. kidding. <laughs> 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 no, I don't understand. No, uh, you're absolutely right. No, it is, it is a ton of work to get there. And uh, for, I know for me personally, the, the fear kicks in. Uh, the anxiety around staying on top. Everybody get a look at Larry O'Brien. <laughs> My closest friend. When you win it, the first probably few days afterwards is a high. Uh, you've accomplished what you've been pursuing uh, together for a long time. Like you said, Shaq, it took us a long time to get there. Uh, but, uh, but then uh, after you become a champion, it's immediately you know you're the hunted now. So everyone wants what you have, and, and immediately for me, the, the anxiety would kick in and, and staying there. Was it, it became prevalent in my mind. I'm actually kind of upset at you, Kenny and Charles, because, you know, for me, no, for me, after I won my first one, after all the hard work we, we, we went through, I heard you guys say, Kenny, win another one. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, damn, I can't even, I can't even get two, three days. Enjoy and after it. I win the second one, oh, yeah, big fella, you know. Show me the like, tape, big fella. I don't no, recall I, 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 I no, you did. You did say I don't recall. I don't remember, I don't remember that. Ernie, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie, I remember because I'm sensitive. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> You're like probably that. the like, most sensitive like, guy yeah, I know. I am. No, I, no, I, I remember that. saying, yeah. actually. No, I'm like, yeah. I don't think that the question in my mind was, can he win another one? I just was, the question in my mind, if I did say it, was... No, you said it. Where is he going to be placed? Because now he's won the championship. Right. Is he going to be the greatest ever? And, you know, because we always thought he was obviously a top 50 player. But then, like, where are now... Now he moved from, like, 45 to, like, 20 after See? one. Then you go from 20 See? to 10. And now where are right. you going to land as an individual player? That for me now is like, well, he Shaq. might be he might be considered the greatest ever because now he won it early in his career. Shaq, why were you sensitive though? Because about that about that statement. No, because you know, after after watching Isaiah and watching Magic, you, you know, we all have the same feelings. We wanted that. And you know, when we played them in 94, 95, they demolished us. I always said to myself, if I ever get back there again, I'm gonna definitely win. But it, you know, for me, like, it took me what, nine years to get one? I'm like, can I enjoy it? And then these guys, can he get two? And then when I get two, oh, can he get three? No, I don't remember. Yeah, oh, you said it. I don't remember three. I, three. I do remember saying, can you get two? Then when I get three and get traded away, oh, they'll never win again. Then I get four, oh, can he get five? Oh, he's too old. So, you know, for me, it was never enough. But I'm the one who said, but, I'll never get five. No, but I just, <laughs> but I just want to say thank you because you motivated me. I that, appreciate that, you those, very much. That, that's the pressure with, with being on top. Uh, you know, when you when you climb in the mountain and you're trying to separate yourself from everyone else, you know, everybody's, everyone's down here. But when you get to the top and they say it's lonely at the top, mm -hmm. you know, you, you really only talking to a, a certain few people that have ever played in the league. You know, maybe one, two percent of the people have ever won championships in the league. And so, you know, the question is, how many times can you do it? So when you win it once, it's like, okay, can you win it again? And you want to keep winning. Long road for the Pistons, Hubie. Long time. Going down in the record books as one of the greatest defensive teams ever in the history of this state. That long journey of a season, and 82 games, and you look back through that, there have to be certain times in that season that you think, yeah, this is a championship unit, or are we really a championship unit? What's that dynamic like, Chauncey? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's always a process throughout the season. Um, you know, the year that we won it, Indiana was, had the best record in the Eastern Conference that year, and they had a great team. They really did, and we went back and forth with those guys 
Um, and then, you know, you go all the way through the playoffs and, and you win. And, and, but there, there are different mentalities that you pick up and carry on throughout the season. Um, whether it's, you know, you going into the game and before the game, Rip and myself looking at each other saying, I don't know who we playing, but it really don't matter. You know, or, or Ben and Sheed, you know, doing their little thing before the game and saying, you know, you take, you take the big fella, I got you in the back, you know. Uh, we'll switch up. You get tired, we'll switch up. You get two fouls, we'll switch up. So, so little things like that that build the culture and build the camaraderie of, of what the team is going to become or not. Yeah, that championship culture is what we talk about. What's the, what's the key ingredient? Is trust the key ingredient uh, or one of the key ingredients in a, in a championship mix? Box? I think so. I or think. Smitty, go ahead. I, I think when you start to look at championships, I'm looking at all these guys and the team I play for, I think the, the best players have to buy into the culture to what the coach is selling, what the GM is selling. Um, if they don't buy in, you know, it's obviously hard for everybody else to buy in. I think that championship culture comes, starts with the best player, and then that's when it trickles down. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think the culture is, is big, but, I, you know, just going back to something, too, as well, that couch over there with Isaiah and Shaq, they had the pressure would they win as individuals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had the pressure as would we win as a team. Right. Mm -hmm. So when people always said, like, will Shaq win another one? They never said, will the Lakers win? Like, how many will Shaq win? So that pressure is way different. How many will Isaiah win? Way different than will your team. Because you can always, when you have that, that night where you kind of just, you play good. You didn't play extraordinary. You didn't play poorly. You can, you can, you can fade into the paint. They could never fade into the paint yeah. of did, the building. And did that pressure weigh on you, or did it motivate you? It kind of motivated me. <clears throat> I didn't start winning until I learned, learned how to trust my teammates. You know, on the show, I always talk about 28-15. That was my number, and I was going to take as many shots as I can to get that number. But once I started trusting my teammates and getting my numbers, then we started winning. Like, and, and you know, these guys knew that I trust them. Like, you know, I could look at Ricky, and Ricky know to get to a spot, and, you know, I'd get it to Ricky. So, you know, they, they easily took the pressure off me. I was going to get mine, but I know when I needed a bucket, I, I can go to Kobe, I can go to uh, Ricky. I didn't uh, know Big you Shot Ricky. Bob. Yeah, Ricky. Yeah. Okay. Big Shot Bob. So, again, so when I started trusting my guys, that's when I started winning. Mm. It, it, was, um, it was different for myself uh, in terms of, uh, like, when Shaq left Orlando and went to L.A., he, he walked into tradition, culture, establishment. You know, he, Chamberlain was on the wall, West was on the wall, trying to build what the Lakers already had, what the Celtics already had. Uh, for us in Detroit, it was a different kind of pressure and a different kind of walk and a different kind of path. So, because we were trying to do it with point guards, uh, winning championships in a, in a league that had traditionally been dominated by the big men winning championships. So since we're going totally against the grain, we had a, a center that was shooting three-point jump shots. <laughs> you know, so we, we, we were just a very awkward team at that time. Much more to come on this edition of Open Court. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about the team that currently holds that bad boy right there, the San Antonio Spurs. We'll be right back. And as we continue our discussion of what it takes to be an NBA champion, and our NBA champions uh, are all here. Um, boy, when you reflect on what you saw in the finals last year, I mean, that San Antonio performance is going to be tough to beat uh, from a team perspective and how they just dismantled uh, Miami. As you watch that, Smitty, uh, what stood out uh, above all? It was seriously one through 12. Every guy that came off the bench, uh, Kenny likes to say it, and I love his take on this. You watch their bench when guys are not in the game. I mean, they are up cheering, and you had a Patty Mills at times. Mm. And Spurs could be the best player for the Spurs. And Kawhi Leonard, obviously, more, <clears throat> more, more time. Boris Diaw at times, and that's what you got to give a lot of credit to Pop. It wasn't just going to Tony, Tim, Manu. I mean, there were times when they were isolated from Boris Diaw. And, you know, their whole thing is good to great. Instead of taking a good shot, get a great shot, and the ball doesn't stick. I mean, that's, that's the Spurs' way, and it was inside out, and now they're basically playing outside in with the, with the team they have now. What I like about their role players is that they master their roles. I, I played with a couple guys that were masterful at their roles. Rick, Big Shot Bob, B. Shaw, Gary Payton, and, you know, the way they move the ball, 
No, it was similar to when, when they beat us that year, the way they moved yeah. the ball. They hit timely shots. And, you know, they also had this look in this eye, I mean, a, a look in their eye that we're not going to lose. And it just showed. And, you know, like you said, 1 through 12, they, they, they played great. They hit timely shots. And, you know, Greg Popovich, you know, he's, he's a master motivator. Yeah. Popovich had a coach by the name of Hank Egan. I don't know if you met. I played for Hank. Yeah, and, and he was on, on Pop's staff for a long time. And, you know, so that philosophical thought of pass, move, screen, move without the basketball, uh, get away from pattern basketball, get away from uh, play calling, philosophical thought, me understanding you, critical thinking out on the court. You know, that's what, that's what they got back to. And it wasn't so much uh, data and analytics. It was about growing the men and, and the values of the game. And that's what we saw in San Antonio. It was a clinic. I mean, in, in, in ball movement and hit the open man who has an open good shot, but I'll make the extra pass. This guy has a more open, even better shot. And it was that way the entire series, Chauncey. Yeah, it was. And, and, and to your point, Isaiah, in order for you to play that way, you got to have basketball players. You got to have guys that know how to play. Know how and to play. As opposed to you got to have stars, you got to have basketball players. Yeah, you, well, you got to have your guys that you got to have some closers that can yeah. finish the game out. But you got to have basketball players, guys that know how to play unselfishly with one another. Um, Boy, the so great teams, as, as we all know, the great teams, sometimes the coach, he, he don't have to call a play for four, five, six minutes in a game because you're out there just playing basketball. You yeah, the hardest. Know how to play. And, and not that they don't have stars. I mean, you got Tim Duncan, Tony Parker. Yeah, oh, but, but, but it's but different. Got, they they were utilized differently. They were utilized differently. And now, today, they said, well, we're going to give it to LeBron or we're going to give it to Kevin Durant. We're going to give it to Westbrook. And we're going to pick and roll. And we're going to just keep the ball 80% in those guys' hands because we're scared that those other guys can't do it. And, and Popovich said, I'm not scared that my guys can't. But you know what's right. interesting, so though? Have, sorry, I mean, so would you rather have basketball players with higher IQ or basketball players that are very talented, guys that can run? Or high IQ, oh, because, yeah, yeah. yeah, high IQ high guys IQ. All day. with talent. Yep. And I, and well, I, Coach, 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 Knight, no, <laughs> Coach and I used to say this. Or. You always take intelligence over ability. You know, you, you, take, you win with smart people. An interesting thing that I see with us on the panel is that all of us come from the same philosophical teaching tree. You know, uh, you at North Carolina, Dean Smith, Coach Knight, passing game, Jeb, passing game, San Antonio, passing game, yourself, Rick, Shaq. So when, when teams were playing against the Lakers and you had Phil Jackson sitting over there, you had Tex Winters sitting over there, you had that brain trust sitting over there. It was like, are you going to beat them? <laughs> <laughs> That's an excellent point. You know? uh, you're trying to play against that. Yeah, yeah isn't it? Yeah. What's the point? Okay. Yeah. Uh, they really, shoot, how are you going to beat them? Uh, <laughs> I mean, you win with smart people. I've never been uh, more proud of the team, nor have I ever gotten as much satisfaction from a season in all the years I've been coaching. Uh, to see the fortitude you guys displayed in coming back from that horrific loss last year and getting yourselves back in position and doing what you did in the finals. Uh, you're really to be uh, honored for that. Well, let's get to Greg Popovich, your old coach. Uh, number one, tell me what you saw in the finals last year. And then, is there a change in the pop we saw then and the pop you played for? Oh, for sure. And that's why you have to say he's one of the best. I mean, when I played with the Spurs, it was David and Tim. We all spaced around. And you got the basketball. I mean, you played off the double team. And it was 80, 20. And when I mean 80% focus on defense. Pushing the guy the one way, push him into David and Tim. And it was all defensively. That's how you stayed on the court. Now you look at Pop now, and you kind of smile because he's de definitely changed, Kenny. I mean, guys are getting up and down, pushing the basketball, taking it a walk-in three. The ball had to go through Tim, had to go through David Robinson before, and I think he's changed with the evolution of his game. Great and coaching. Also, and great coaching. Like is, is Tony, coach. Tony Parker's a Hall of Famer. Yes. Would he be if he wasn't playing with Pop? Absolutely not. No Probably way. not. No. That's my point. And, yes. and, and it's way, obvious to see that. Right. It, he, well, could, he could be just a good player. How do you know that, though? But you can't know because it's certain skill Would Pop set. be Pop without Hank Egan? I don't think so. You know, and that, that that's and, where and then, that's what we miss. And, you and then know, I think also like, will pop be like pop. that guy should be talking. David Robinson 
wasn't unselfish and allowed Tim Duncan to be the guy when he still could have been the guy. You got to have guys that you know, unselfish to be great, I think, to win championships. And the reason definitely. I say you can say that, Ernie, because when you saw Isaiah Thomas come in from uh, college, you say, he's a Hall of Famer. We just got to see, remember we talked about how many rings will Isaiah win? We never said that about Tony Park. Is it more a compliment just, to Pop, then? Is yeah, it more, because... I think it's more that. I mean, I think Tony is, I mean, he's very talented yes. and has a great career, but he's had the advantage and the luxury of playing for this one coach for his whole career and let him grow knows into the doing. player that he's become and changing the system, too, because he's gotten better, he's gotten older. He's a great pick-and-roll player, gets in the paint, you can't keep him out of the paint. He's had a guy that, that understands that and, and allows him to be who he is. So would you say... It might be different if it was someone else. So based on the question that you asked, Kenny, so would, is it fair to say that, that coaches make players rather than players make coaches? I would say coaches maximize your potential. I think sometimes it goes both ways. Mm, I agree. I, I, I think that players, players can showcase what a coach can do, but a great coach is always a great coach. But I, you, I, you do have coaches who will say, you know what, yeah, I look pretty brilliant given the, the cast that I'm working with make me look pretty good. So I think it works. But I've seen guys coach Shaq that yeah. aren't in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. And it won't be in the Hall of Fame. I don't, you know, me, me and Rick don't want to call guys out, but, you know, what made Phil... But you're about to. Not, not really. <laughs> what made Phil great is he didn't panic. So, you know, you guys heard me say this many times. If the general doesn't panic, the troops don't panic. Like, you know, right. we'd, we'd mess up in the game, and we'd be looking for Phil to call a timeout, and he'd be like, I'm not bailing you guys out. Handle it. So, you know, we respected that. We learned from that. It helped us grow. Now, other coaches that we played for down by one in the timeout... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Pop, Pop, yeah, right. Pop and you yo, got man. Shaq. Yeah, yo, yo, team, man, call a play. Um, 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 <laughs> that, you look the last 15 years or so, Pop, Phil Jackson, those two have pretty much dominated. All right. and, and they set the culture for each of those organizations, whether it's, whether it's Phil in Chicago, Phil in L.A., uh, now he's in New York. But the culture is set, in, I think, by those two men. Uh, and then it trickles down through their assistants, through the players. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a tipping point to where in that organization, the expectation when you join it is nothing but championships every year, regardless of what the lineup looks like, regardless of what your opponents look like. There's an expectation that comes comes with being a part of that organization. And, and I think I've been in Celtic organizations where even when we, we weren't having great years, they still thought we were going to win a championship. The expectation was still there. Same right. in L.A. Now you see San Antonio. You know, regardless of what we thought was going to happen right. last year, yeah. they still superseded everyone's expectations. Ernie, I have a question for Chauncey. Shaq, go ahead and ask this. <laughs> Before you played for Larry Brown, mm -hmm. was the was the coaching culture different for you to win those championships? Let me explain why. Because me and Rick played for a couple guys, practice four or five hours a day, get get to the Western Conference Finals, lose to Utah. When Phil came, practice one hour, we meditate. Phil Phil had this instant that he said it was the cousin of cannabis, but it smelled a lot like cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> I would live, live in Denver. Oh, so, yeah. and, you were, and you were familiar yeah. with that smell? Of course I am. I'm a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> no, Excellent but, answer. No but, no, but he'd come in, he'd make us meditate, you know, and it actually took us about, what, four months to get used to that? He'd yeah. come in, and it was, and it was what, completely different of what we were used to. Yeah. He'd come in, we'd meditate for about an hour with the uh, cousin of cannabis, and, you know, He'd tell us to meditate, and he would always tell us to think about not making it to the finals, but think about winning that championship. Mm -hmm. And as we got used to it, it worked. I and want to know. follow up on that. Uh, I, can I, I tell you what? Yeah. I, I'd love to hear it, and we need to take a break, but remember that thought, and, and it really wasn't a cousin of cannabis. It was a distant <laughs> relative. Uh, <laughs> it was called one. Sage. sage. <laughs> <laughs> like Phil, I need that Sage contact you got. <laughs> I think I could have blocked that sky hook. I think I could have got it. I could have got it a couple of times. I don't think you could have. You could have goaltended it. Times. Huh? You're just going to block it when? On the way up? I, I, I could have got him, Zeke. When Kareem was like 22, 25, 27, the stuff that he was doing in this league, Shaheed, he'd have been, I'm, I love you, and you know I love you. <laughs> but he'd have been giving it to you. <laughs> 
And we welcome you back to uh, Open Court here on NBA TV. We're talking about championship teams. We've got a panel of champions, and we're going to test everybody's recall. I know uh, in, in line here we have Chauncey to answer Shaq's question, mm -hmm. which uh, got derailed on the cousin of cannabis line, and then Isaiah wanted to jump in on that. So I think you were going to him on what, on Rick? So, yeah, his, his question was, was, was a good one. I mean, I, I had my first five years play for five different coaches, five, four or five different cities, and then finally found, you know, found <laughs> a blessing in, in coming to Detroit and then in turn playing for Rick, I mean, uh, excuse me, not Rick Carlisle first, but Larry Brown. Mm -hmm. And he, his question was, you know, how different was it? I mean, the way my career had gone, I don't think you guys, none of you guys' career probably had went like mine's at the start. And it was a big difference, you know, playing for Larry Brown and, and coming in there and, and practice was different. The field was different. Um, you know, he, he had championship aspirations for our team, and that was different. You know, not making the playoffs, maybe go second round this time or Eastern Conference Finals this time. It was championship, period. And that's all we talked about. That's all we prepared for. And it was just different. And it, and it, it, it changes the mindset and the trajectory of the team in, in an instant. When that coach comes in, you'd be like, oh, we're going to win it. You know it right away. Absolutely. Yeah. Because what they have to do, and Rudy T did this, honestly, he was able to make everyone feel the same way every day. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of coaches, they don't have that consistency. They say, okay, no one's above the team. We have to stay together. We got to lock arms. And as soon as there's some adversity, he pulls, up, he pulls the arms apart yeah. because he'll make a decision that pulls the arm. But the great coaches don't care if they get fired. They don't care if they get a raise. They don't care if they're coaching in a wreck. They're going to have the same philosophy if they're coaching a third-grade team or right. an NBA team, and they're going to stick and, with it. And the biggest thing, Kenny, and players love that. Is, you're right. And, and, and great players want to be coached. I think the greatest coaches coach the best players the hardest. And that, that's, been my, that's been my experience, and I, and I just believe that. And you look at Popovich right now. I mean, he is on Tim Duncan and Tony Parker worse than anybody else. Shaq will team. give it to you, right? But you got to fight you. Yeah. If you don't fight, fight you, you fight as him. a great player, Shaq, did you not respect the coach as much? I would have to say yes. You know, Phil, Phil stayed on me. Phil was really a master psychologist. He would interview you a couple hours, uh, pass out books on, you know, what type of person he thought you represented. Uh, he gave me a book on Frederick Nietzsche. Uh, you probably don't know about Frederick Nietzsche because you went to UNC. So let me... Uh, <laughs> I, 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 let me give you a yes, Nietzsche quote. Yes. Nietzsche, was, Nietzsche was so crazy that uh, he actually was a genius. So that's how Phil thought, thought of me. You know, he thought I was crazy, but he thought I was a genius. So, you know, Phil, Phil, Phil knew what buttons to push to tick me off. He knew what buttons to push to tick Rick off. Like, I remember one time he didn't play Rick for like four straight games. But then when he played Rick, like, Rick, yeah, yeah, Rick went on a roll. So he, you know he was a he was a, definitely a button pusher. But 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 you're right. Like if you didn't pick me off, then I really didn't respect you. You know, and I couldn't play for you. And you pushed him yeah. every year. It got we pushed and you particularly pushed him more and more. Yeah, more and more. By year four, I think we thought we knew the triangle better than Phil. Yeah, <laughs> which, which got us in trouble. As Isaiah, I appreciate your patience because you've been sitting on a thought uh, for a while. <laughs> no, it's it, no, it's but, all good. But go. Well, it's all good because it 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 basically um, you know reinforces what I was thinking in terms of the great coaches. They teach from the neck up. You know, they're more about teaching you the game of life and applying the game of life to the basketball court. You know how they always tell you strive to be the best you can be and try to get everything out of yourself that you can as a basketball player, your potential. This is what it means. It means that I got the best out of myself as a small guy in this league, and that's all I can ask for. The bad coaches, they only teach you from the neck down. They only concern with your jump shot, with your inside pivot, with your, your, your pump fake. And I... That's a good point. The name Kawhi Leonard. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody talked about, yeah, this guy's on the brink, or this guy's really got some skills. I mean, he, he sneaks up on nobody the rest of his career. <laughs> Thanks for pushing me. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. That's it was what a it's crazy saying. feeling. That's what it's about, baby, right? Yes. You earned it. You earned it. 
Yeah. And, and I think that's a testament to the Spurs system. I think what they do better than most teams is develop. If you go to one of their practices or even watch them before the game, you're working on the shots that you're going to get in a game. Uh, you're going to shoot a corner three all the way up to that little breaking part. Most guys are not allowed in the Spurs system to shoot a top of the key three. And I think also just working on his jump shot and, and Pop giving him confidence. The, the trade was George Hill for Kawhi Leonard. Now, if Leonard is with the Indiana Pacers, you know, is he the Leonard that he is with the San Antonio Spurs? You know, I don't know. Yeah. You know, because at that time they had, um, you know, they had Paul George, um, Danny Granger, Granger, you know, Granger, Granger you know, so, you know, now he's with San Antonio and he gets a chance to develop. He gets a chance to find out who he is. When he was in San Diego playing uh, at San Diego, you know, he, I think they took, they went to the, the Sweet 16 or the right. Elite yeah, Eight. They made a run. Made yeah, a run. I mean, so you, you knew he was a, a good basketball player and you knew he was a great basketball player, but you just didn't know quite how he fit. And in the systems of pass and game, read and react, you are looking for the players who are not, who don't fit the constructed box of point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center. You're looking for those interchangeable, versatile parts that you can plug in. Now, mm -hmm. can they fit those boxes when they need to? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But can they come out of those boxes? Chauncey Billups, one or two. I don't know which night you want him to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Pop understands, and, and to me, it's like, everybody in the NBA has been a star before. Like, they just can't be stars over long periods of time. So he could take a guy, say, for three games, four games, your role is increased, mm. and, and he's going to trust you because, you like, Ginobili has been a star, not just not NBA, but a superstar in the national. Mm -hmm. So when he comes to the Spurs, I remember asking him, I said, what's the hardest thing? He said, being a role guy. Because he's used to being the star with the ball. And everybody Kenny, has been that. He's the sixth man. Right, exactly. You tell Ginobili coming from Argentina and he's drafted by some other team in the NBA? Oh, he's rolling. You going to be the sixth man? No. Dude. But, Zeke, I think Get that, me out I of think here. That's, that's really pop of it. That's how great and clever he is because you say, yeah, he, he should be a starter for my team, but I can bring him off as a sixth man, and now I can put the ball in his hands. Now he's running every pick and roll, making every play because Tony Parker's watching. So, really, it, I mean, it's a sixth man, but it's really a third option. When we, when we come back, um, so you win the title, and now the target's on your back. Um, what's that season like? These guys all know. <laughs> and we'll talk about it when we come back. Those guys have ate their fish, they pasta, <laughs> they steak, they went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> they went to bed the night before, you know, at 8 o'clock, 8.30. They've studied all your moves, and you, you just can't match their energy and their intensity for 82 games. And we welcome you back to Open Court here on NBA TV, talking about NBA champions with NBA champions. Uh, so you win, uh, and you get your rings, and the season begins, um, and then the target is on your back. <laughs> and every time you take the floor, it's the or one of the biggest games of the year for the other guys. Um, how difficult is that in the course of a year uh, when you may not be feeling it one night, but those other guys who were 14th out of 15 in the conference the year before are loaded for bear and waiting for you? Every night you, you play, uh, you go into the opposing team's building. Those guys have ate their fish, they pasta, <laughs> they steak, they went to bed. <laughs> yeah, they went to, they bed. went to bed night before, you know, at 8 o'clock, 8.30. They've studied all your moves, and yeah. you, you just can't match their energy and their intensity for 82 games. So some nights you're going to get caught. And this, and this, is, this was the beauty of, of Chuck Daly for us. Um, at the start of the season, he asked us this question. He said, do you think you're good enough to go in anybody's building and win one game in a playoff series. And we all to a man said yes. He said, then 
home court is not that important to us this year. Let's make sure we get our rest and we stay healthy. So that second year, we didn't finish with the best record in the lead. Actually, Portland finished with the best record. And, uh, you know, we had to go out to Portland, and uh, it was a 2-3-2. Uh, you know, so it was, it was different, you know, but you can't match everybody's energy every night. So some nights, you know, you lose by 20. You know, the coach takes you out early. You know, you're down 20 in the third, and he just throw in a towel and say, okay, we'll save it for the next night. You know, for us, we lived in a cute city, so the only problem... <laughs> Cute city. Very cute city. So, you know, guys are coming to training camp, you know, doing things different. You know, but we were also the type of team that we would have to get mad for us to get back on track. So, you know, uh, the second one was, was, was very difficult. The third was very difficult. But we had so much going on that... In the regular season. Yeah, in the regular season. Yeah. We had so much going on in the regular season that it only took one or two things to just, you know, get us really, really, yeah. really upset. And then we would, you know, always jail at the right but time. But I think we would create a lot of... <laughs> Yeah, adversity had, had for ourselves to keep ourselves entertained. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, uh, when I look back at it, because the first one took a lot of focus. It was probably our hardest one to get. Uh, and then once that happened, we were pretty confident about ourselves. We, we understood we had a good system. We had great players, stars, a great supporting cast. But in the midst of facing 82 games in the regular season, if it, wasn't a, if it wasn't a team that we thought we'd have to face down the road, we'd have a slow start. We'd come out the gates, you know, short in the first quarter. But then, you know, we'd eventually gather ourselves up. But and we were so good that, you know, we could be down by 15 yeah, in the fourth we quarter definitely. and then come back and spank them. Yes. <laughs> come back and spank them real good. <laughs> 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 uh, so that clip early. So that yeah. clip early. Yeah. Why? Why? 15. Why? Yeah, he <laughs> Portland has three timeouts left. The Lakers have two. Bryant to shot. Does he always say that I found him? I didn't find him. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, the, the, I, it, the, the same way it works against you, that your target is, it actually helps you some nights. Because yeah. if you get to the fourth quarter and you're up nine, teams would think they couldn't come back. Because mm -hmm. they're going to have a championship yeah, yeah. team. They're not going to make those mistakes. And you wouldn't a lot of times, but it actually worked in your favor. But I always thought the hardest part about this, because we were a six seed the second year and won it. Six seed. Incredible, six. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, with no home court advantage, no round. Every 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 round started on the road. <laughs> so and so you talk about can you win a game on the road? We used to call, I used to, one time I got off the plane and we, we were in San Antonio and I was like, who is good to be home? We no, we played for Houston. And so right. Dream was like, oh, that's a good way to look at it, Kenny. <laughs> 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 but uh, the hardest part for us, the second year. When training can start, the guys who were in are used to a lot of attention, yeah. getting a lot of attention, and they came in with shades on, <laughs> on the bus, the mute and headphones on, not paying attention. In the, where those were like your, your dirty guys, like that's just going like, they're going to run through walls, you know, because some guys just can't run through a wall because they're playing too many minutes. Kenny, what what shades did different? you prefer, by the way, Kenny? What's that? Which shades did oh, you I prefer? Was, I was a Gucci guy. Oh, okay. but, uh, Kenny, did you <laughs> come in and practice uh, Was it a different philosophy for you guys practicing? It was pra it was different for those guys because those just were the those guys, guys that not everybody. Push, they would push you in practice as you was a starter. They stopped pushing you. Yeah, earlier, <laughs> earlier so Shaq mentioned we, we used to only practice for an hour. I was like, I don't know what, what practice this was. But, you know, the stars carry the load. So, yes, Shaq needed yeah. to be on the treadmill at times or just resting because he had three, four guys on his back <laughs> most of the time. And, you know, and the supporting guys like myself. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Yeah. So you had, you had <laughs> two, uh, two and a half hour uh, practice. Two and a half hour yeah. practice. But, no, but that was, that's uh, what it was, be like, that's what it was about. Bro. Yes, sir. <laughs> it was about knowing your role, too. It was about knowing what you did to support a Shaq and a Kobe, and at the same time, though, that regular season grind was about the rest of us stepping up and at times having to play bigger, uh, and then maybe we'd, we would have to do in a, in a playoff stretch, but yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. Uh, when, you, when we showed up and actually showed up like champions for two quarters by the halftime, we could be up by 15 and 20, and more times than not, the rest of those teams would just pack it in, pack it in. especially because no. we were in L.A., because they're thinking, okay, they start star watching, gazing, thinking about where they're going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're gonna to, for the next show, we're going to definitely have to split these two up. That's, uh, that's for you know, sure. It's funny. It's funny. Uh, we, we had a very unique team. Um, and, you know, we won the championship. We come back the following season. And we, we had this unbelievable ability to, like, flip the script. 
So we would like, we were good at like telling ourselves and, and, and believing it uh, within the, the team saying, no, we're still the underdogs. We wasn't supposed to win last year. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't supposed to win. Everybody thought we got lucky. Everybody thought it was because they had a lot uh -oh. going on. Maybe it was. Yeah, it was. Don't even matter. <laughs> don't even matter. Oh, it was. It was a scrimmage. <laughs> it was a scrimmage. It don't even matter. It was, it was a scrimmage. But we, <laughs> we had this unique thing, man, where we, we still but, but, were able John, to. Detroit always beats us. Come on, man. I mean, it's that, easy work. I mean, every, wow. every time we, wow. we, we, we love to see the oh, Lakers see. in the finals because oh, it's, it's just a sweet every it's just easy. I mean, because it's no. a cute Every city. Every time we see no, the Lakers, it's yeah. about nobody else. Yeah, just just give me the Lakers. The Lakers just yeah, show we up. Took, we took right after y'all, man. All right. <laughs> Back with the uh, the ever popular lightning round as we wrap up this edition of uh, Open Court right after this. So Danny bleeding, Joe burning. He's like, yo, man, you bleed. So, you know, he had to get stitches, but <laughs> that was, <laughs> get stitches. It's fun. It's a fun time. Check out NBA.com for more Open Court. We welcome you back to Open Court. We, uh, we like to call this segment uh, the lightning round. Uh, you could also call it the last two or three minutes of the show. You could also call it uh, the last segment. You can call it whatever you want. We call it the lightning round. It's catchy. Um, so when you're celebrating a championship, take the fans, the viewers, inside the pandemonium of a championship-winning locker room. Best thing that happens, craziest thing that happens. <laughs> what, uh, because you're shaking your head, you get to go first. Uh, it was, I mean, I, I hardly made it back to the locker room. I was in the stands. I was with my family. <laughs> I'm with the homies. I'm, <laughs> I never, I, I, I really didn't even made it back. And when I did make it back, um, I mean, it was just, it was pandemonium. I mean, it was champagne everywhere. It was, it was crowded in there. It was crying. It was tears. Yeah. It was laughter. I mean, it was, it was one of the most beautiful nights of my life. Just for I, I all think, you, I think, yeah. I think, Kenny, let me, I mean, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so many people, and it's amazing how I could find my kids at all them people. Mm -hmm. I could find my wife, I can find my dad with all those people on the court. And then for me, it was special. Me and Kevin Willis grew up together. Same high school, same neighborhood, same, went to the same college. And Kev grabbing me, and I couldn't get it off. You know, Kev had me. With, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Kev. And Kev squeezing me, saying, we won one for the neighborhood. Right. But for uh -huh. me, that's huge, coming from east side of Detroit, me and Kev won one for the neighborhood. You mentioned kids, and that is, uh, my kids were young at the time, and we were fortunate to win a couple of them, but, uh, you know, champagne, beer, cigars, and I had a cigar in my hand and a champagne bottle. My, my son, all he wanted to know was why, why I was smoking. <laughs> why, I was, why I was drinking. You're not supposed to drink and smoke, Dad. And, uh, and then as we went along and won a couple more, he, he, we would do the parade each year. And, and we'd pull down the tunnel, we'd get out, and he'd see the buses again. He'd go, oh, not this again, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the kids have different reactions. It means different yeah. things to them. This guy tackled me. Right. First one, and, and poured champagne, not, in, not in, it all in my eye. I'll never forget that. Well, just so y'all don't know, for those who've never won a championship, champagne burns. Yes. That's yeah. what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. just for yeah. those yeah. who don't yeah. know, yeah. It, yeah. It, it did twice. It really did mess my vision up. So I had to go get LASIK. Yeah, I mean, you know, for <laughs> us. No, but, uh, <laughs> The funniest thing is where Clyde, when the second one, uh, he he didn't know what to do. So he went, he, he, you know, the PR person grabbed him and took him to the interview room. So we're all in the locker room with the champagne. It was like, where's Clyde? The guys hold who on, played on, on that team. Hold on, he ain't get a champagne. Hey, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's his first. That's his first. That's his first. Yes, sir. His first. Okay. I had to come get you. I had to come get you. He never came back to the lock. He, he didn't know what to do. I was like, no, this is the protocol when you were the champion. We had a, right. we had a massage therapist. His name was Dan Garcia. So our <laughs> second one, we was running. We, you know, we was jumping around, and I slipped, and the champagne bottle busted Ooh. his head. So <laughs> he in there bleeding. And, uh, at That's the time, a funny story. No. <laughs> time, no, but, no it's, funny because, it's funny because at the time, DMX had a hit record, so we was in there, y'all gonna make me lose my mind. Something <laughs> here. Ha <laughs> ha! 
So Danny bleeding, <laughs> champagne burning. You know what I'm saying? He was like, yo, man, you bleed. So, you know, he had to get stitches, but <laughs> yeah, that was, was a fun time. Uh, Isaiah, you, you avoided getting anything on, on, on Chuck Daly's suit, right? <laughs> no, I, I, I was I was I was pouring champagne on everybody. I, I was I was happy, and you know I remember, you know, like like Steve said. That song you uh, sang. What was the song? Heaven must <laughs> be like. That's exactly how it felt. Do it again. Bring it up. Must be like. Bad boy, bad boy, remix. 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 I'll never forget. That's what I remember about you singing that song. Yeah. A place where I can find uh, happiness. Yeah. <laughs> A place within <laughs> your lovely day. <laughs> and on that note, we wrap up this edition of Open Court. We'll see you next time on Open Court.